If you've got uh, a camera or a mic, I can turn those on. I can say hello to you at three o'clock in the morning in a very friendly Brummie accent saying, hi, I'm Ron. Today I'm gonna to do a, a brief sort of 10, five, 10 minute hack on Windows 8. Windows 8 is a little bit old, but we're not attacking Windows 8. We're attacking an application called Java. Java is a, an application that runs on quite a lot of games. So if you're into games and you're doing Java games, uh, you, you may have seen it. It's people that have got computer skills, computer knowledge, that are breaking into systems. Now, if I'm a white hat hacker, I am doing that with permission, so I'm subject to the laws of the land, and I'm doing it with permission of the owner of the network. A grey hat is somebody that's doing it full time as a white hat, but maybe doing some research, and we'll get into the laws a little bit later. A black hat is doing it maliciously. If you are ethical, you are generally working for a company and you are performing a security assessment or a security audit uh, and working with that client to make sure that their security you know, is, is robust really so the bad guys or the bad girls nowadays uh, can get into the network or can't get into the network. It takes me about five minutes and really what I'm trying to do is get you to click on a link. So this is a click jack attack, where it would be something free, something useful that you want, but it's actually giving me access to your machine. I'm gonna search for uh, the Java signature. So there is a vulnerability in Java that allows me to do a reverse TCP connection. Now that's important because from your point of view, if I'm your machine and I'm connecting out to the internet, that traffic will go through your firewall. I'm not attacking you, you're connecting to me. I've got my local host address just for this demo. I don't actually need to do that for this to work. And I've got my local port set up. So that's four lines of code. I then say where I want that connection to come back to me onto my machine. Now, if I was doing this, in slightly more detail. Really, I would point that to a, a proper website, but in this demo, I'm not doing that. I then create my payload, which is my reverse TCP connection. And as I said a moment ago, that's a connection from your machine through your firewall across the internet to me. And that's six lines of code. So with six lines of code, I've got my website set up. It's a vulnerability assessment, so it depends. There's, there's many facets. I'm traditionally a network security person, so I would look at routers and switches. Uh, you can focus on applications, so if a new application comes out, you can do testing on that. Websites is huge, everybody's got a website. Uh, you could do things like SQL injections on a website. So when you're logging into a website, you would have a username and a password. That username and a password is going back predominantly to a database, usually an SQL database. If I inject code into that form, that database may give me information that it was never intended to do. Now all I need to do is entice you to go and click on that URL. So how do I do that? Um, what would get you to click? Would it be free food, free McDonald's, uh, free kittens, um, a free day at the spa. It can be anything and everything. And I can send out hundreds of thousands of emails with all different versions of that. And as you can see, once you've clicked the link, we've got a uh, Metapreta session that's popped up. I've now got an encrypted uh, connection from you to me and unfortunately this is where it gets a little bit creepy um, I've now got complete access to your machine that's your C drive that's your D drive that's your camera that's your mics absolutely everything any files that you've got I've got complete access to um, I can open up those files I can download those files and again if I was being malicious I would actually start to install um, other vulnerabilities and other viruses onto your system. I can take a screenshot, which I'm just about to do. There you go, there's a screenshot of the desktop. Again, if you've got uh, a camera 
or a mic, I can turn those on, I can record you, I can say hello to you at three o'clock in the morning in a very friendly Brummie accent saying, hi, I'm Ron. If you store your passwords, and again, I'm just gonna show a little example. I've gone into my folder of Ron. I'm gonna have a look. I've uh, very foolishly stored my passwords as a plain text file. So very quickly now I can open up that plain text file. And even if it's in a Word document or you've got some sort of encryption on it, I may be able to download that file and view my password. So, and there you go. Uh, there's my BCU password, my bank account number and my bank account pin. And that took, what, 10 minutes? Probably less than that to break into your machine and I've got complete control. So to be a good ethical hacker, you need uh, a quite a rounded skill set, uh, an understanding of operating systems, so Windows, uh, Linux, Apple, Android, uh, that's becoming quite a big area. Um, a good understanding of networking, so the OSI 7 layer model, routers, switches. Um, so again, from a course point of view, you would do uh, Cisco, Juniper, Palo Alto, they're different companies that we work with and teach those technologies. It's very broad. I mean, you don't just have to do ethical hacking, so that's the more offensive side of security. So you're testing networks, you're working with clients. You can be on the defensive side, so that's blue teaming, working in a network operation centre, a secure operation centre, so you're monitoring from a cyber security point of view. Oh, uh, at the moment, it, if you've got a lot of skills, so if you can do Windows, you can do Linux, you can do web, um, graduates, 35 to 40, if you've been in the industry, 100,000 plus. A student should come to BCU to study ethical hacking because it's the best module ever. You get paid to be naughty, you get to break into systems, you get to beat everybody else's security. There's a, there's a mentality of, can I beat you? Can I beat your security? I'm better than you. That puzzles, that lateral thinking, that thinking outside the box. Actually, if you're on the spectrum, um, um, people that have got dyslexia, I'm dyslexic, we think differently, that's great. Because you think differently and therefore you can get round all of the security and you can get in. And that, when you beat somebody, is the best feeling in the world. You have to have permission to be an ethical hacker. If you don't have permission, then you're an unethical hacker. And actually, I've just broken uh, the Computer Misuse Act Section 1, Section 2 and Section 3. Uh, that will get you, if you get caught, and you probably will get caught nowadays, uh, up to 10 years in jail, uh, in prison. Um, not a very nice place uh, to go, I would imagine. Uh, so please come to the university. We'll teach you how to do this ethically. So there's a quick review of, please don't click links that you shouldn't. Make sure you know who they come from and where they've come from. And if the offer is too good, too good to be true, back away. Hopefully you found that informative and thank you for watching.